All right, guys, that was Smooth Doc Pim Putter from the Real Man Conference and Dating Doctors. Next up, we have a bonus talk from Orlando Owen, who spoke yesterday. <coughs> He's going to do sort of a hypnosis thing. I don't it's, know. It's getting rid of issues. I'm, I'm showing you yeah. a technique to get rid of some real, real yeah. fears and, and limiting stuff. Cool. You can always apply to anything and everything. Well, it's going to be awesome. And you guys know him from yesterday, so kick some more ass, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. All right, man. Appreciate yep. it. Yep. Okay. You know, oh. cool. Thank you, guys. I run a program called Magic Mail, and in this pro in this program, I do something that is much, much bigger than just looking at each and every individual thing. Like, for instance, there's, there's things about approach anxiety that you can deal with, or there's things about emotional stuff you can deal with, there's ways to game people, there's all this kind of stuff. And a few years back, I, um, I said, okay, there's got to be a, a different way to tie this all together. There's got to be like a holistic, I hate that word, but a holistic, sustainable way to, uh, to really get all your issues handled and see them in synergy rather than isolated phenomena. It's kind of like a wheel. I re reinvented the wheel you, so you guys don't have to. But there's seven components to it, just to give you like a box cover to this whole thing. And it's all very much interconnected. If you work on one, you'll get all of them will, will raise. It's kind of like the hundredth monkey effect. So if you, if you look at the individual things, it's going to be very difficult for you to really see, okay, this guy says this, okay, this guy says that, okay, this seems to be a contradiction. There's the caveman style that I very much like of bad boy. But yet there's a whole different thing about being authentic and, and actually being truthful to who you are. And the one component of this magic male process, there's seven. There's like remasculation, daring to be a man. There's like what I call ultra deep game, which is a very deep bodily, almost bioenergetic way to get rid of issues once and for all, which is not mental or cerebral. There is radical presence. There's the thing I talked about. This is like a charisma kind of training. There is how can you even be present, pre exude presence. You have to be present with your own emotional issues. There is magnetic attraction, which is the law of attraction of attraction that we talked yesterday. This is how, how can you even let these, these things in. You can't only let into your life what you're already vibrating on. There is what I call play and not game, which is a totally different way of approaching game to me is like something very manipulative, whereas play, being playful, I mean, fears are contextual. The fear of approaching it becomes a dare like bungee jumping to me. If I have to do a cold approach, I freeze up. Instead, I get into a different context and I just go and I talk to the girl and there's nothing to it. I have zero approach anxiety when I'm just talking to a girl. When I'm opening up a set, it's fearful and, you know, by the sweat of thy brow, shalt thy open women. A bunch of bullshit. There's sexual mastery, there is authentic power. All this ties in together. You can't really do one without affecting all the other five, uh, six pieces. It's seven pieces. The one I'm going to go into right now is called Ultra Deep Game, and it's a way of really getting rid of fears. Now, in the Bible, I'm not a Christian by any stretch, but uh, Jesus said something that said, Choose you, a man can only serve two masters fear or love doubt or faith. Choose you therefore this day which master you shall serve. Now there's only really two basic emotions. There's only like trust and love and that's where all the stuff you become yourself, you become authentic, you become very powerful and women will feel that. Even if you're admitting like Pim was saying for instance, yeah I have approach anxiety or I'm a little shy or I'm a little nervous, that's fine but that takes a lot of courage. The other side of the equation is all your fears and that's all the stuff that's holding you back, that's holding you down. There's only two fears that are natural, quote unquote, that babies have. The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. All others are by definition conditioned. Like approach anxiety is conditioned. Public speaking, that fear is conditioned. You learn this stuff in kindergarten, you learn it in, in high school. Some people don't have it. Those are the naturals. All others have it. And it's those fears that will stop you from anything. They'll stop you from approaching a girl. They'll stop you from being authentic. They'll stop you from feeling deserving of certain things. And you can only attract into your life what you feel deserving of. The one thing you need to really get rid of is your fears and your pains. 
and that's sort of like something you've built up over years and years and decades. What I do is kind of like peeling away the layers of an onion. It's like top shit on top of shit on top of shit and so forth. In your colon, if you have emotional problems, I mean, if you have, if you have toxic food, your colon will start developing sort of like a bin liner, kind of like, a, like, you know, the trash stuff you put in there so it doesn't get dirty. It's kind of like a protective layer to keep you from toxins. It's called mucoidal plaque, and it's a very negative substance. Yes, it does shield your, your intestines from, from absorbing toxins. Of course, it also shields you, and that's the bad news, from absorbing nutrients, meaning those fears are the same way. They keep you from actually approaching life. You're hiding behind this fortress. It's kind of like that song by Sting, Fortress Around Your Heart, or what Madonna is singing, the, um, what is it called, the, you're frozen when your heart's not open. That's fear. That's what keeps you, you have to look good so you can't take chances of approaching a girl. And, and let's say you're being shut down, you're having emotional stuff that you're going to be afraid of. You're not afraid of the girl, you're afraid of what you're going to do to yourself afterward. Those things are all hardwired to your, they're automatic responses. They've become so, they're not like hardwired in the sense that they were always there, but they're conditioned through what uh, neuro neurologists call neuroplasticity. It's a, it's a lengthy conditioning process which you can undo. And what I call, what we're going to do here is what um, I would call emotional high colonics. You know what a high colonics are, right? It's like when they stick a tube up your butt and they wash out all the mucoidal plaque and the shit. Well, well, what? No, what? No, the stick a tube up. It's, it's called. It's like you know colonics. It's uh, it's it's cleaning out your colon, and they stick a tube up your butt, and they put in hot and cold water, and they flush out the shit, because all that mucoidal plaque that supposedly shields you from toxins shields you from nutrients. It shields you from. I mean, it has all kinds of bacteria grow in there, and and you know nasty shit. It's, it's a fertile ground for all the negative stuff, just like your sub unconscious mind, not your subconscious, but your unconscious mind will harbor crap. It's like viruses on your hard drive. They'll start replicating to the point of until your hard drive is completely full. And that's what happens to most guys. Your hard drive is full. And then you can't really go out there and learn new stuff. You can't really take chances. You're, you're trying to play it safe. And this is all fear. I'm going to show you a way to get rid of those fears real, real quick. I learned this, this method that I'm going to show you from Steve P. And uh, Steve Pickers, you know who he is, right? Steve P and, and what Neil calls Rasputin, Eric, uh, Hypnotica. But those, those guys taught me some very important stuff. And I took this method about 10 years ago and I started developing it a little bit further into a context of where I raise fears, which Steve usually doesn't do. He waits till a fear comes up. I actually raised a fear to a point to, or the pain, to where it becomes like ever so uncomfortable. The more uncomfortable it becomes, the better it is because it's like a gopher that you're trying to smoke out, you know, these little moles that are like eating up your garden. It's like smoking them out and these things will come up. When they come up, it's, it's like Caddyshack, that stupid movie from like way back where they're trying to smoke out these stupid gophers out of a, a golf course and it's like grab the motherfucker and they're like okay now I got you by the balls you're gonna die motherfucker that's it that's what we're gonna do to your fears that's what we're gonna do to your little issues because that's it's almost like ever heard the expression somebody's pushing your buttons it's like oh yeah she was pushing my buttons well how can she how can she push my buttons? Just, do I have like a panel here of like, like button number like 3B, whatever, 5, delta, whatever? And she pushes it, and then I'm like a slave to my own emotions. It's like an emotional charge fires off somewhere, and I'm a slave to it. I don't like to be that. William Reich was a psychologist. He was a student of Freud who really rejected Freud's very analytical um, approach of psychoanalysis, which doesn't work. You can go to a psychiatrist for 30 years. I mean, I'm going to probably like piss off some psychiatrists here. But the point is, from my own psychology background, I can tell you that shit does not work. You know why you're fucked up, but it's cerebral. William, William Reich was into bioenergetics. He said the issues get trapped in the tissues, meaning it's literally assuming that mind, body, and spirit are like one. They are. They're connected, very much connected. And you can't isolate an emotional problem. You can't solve it 
with your mind. It's just not on the same level. It's like, it doesn't compute. So in order to really raise an issue, you, in order to get rid of a fear, you have to basically confront it, bring it up, and then when you have it, you feel it in your body, you realize, hey, it's all connected. I can maybe even see colors, I can see images come up with this. And when you have it all connected, that's when you literally pull it out of your, out of your cells. Now, science, bio, um, biology, biochemistry actually found out a few years ago that fears, emotional trauma, anything like that is literally written into cellular memory, very much like a hard drive. It's like, zzz, 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 writes it down into cellular memory, billions and trillions of cells. It's anchored through proteins. And the only way to get rid of it is to either go into shock or like, you know, pattern interrupts, very, very drastic methods that I don't like, or sort of like a little bit of a trance level. Where you really address the issue, you really confront it, you let it come up naturally. Now I'm gonna raise issues here for you, and just a few. Don't do this by yourself. We do this in the workshops in a very controlled environment. Now most psychologists would call this ab reactions and they're deathly afraid because most psychiatrists and psychologists have about 40 hours of hypnosis training. I have about 6,000. But I'm not gonna do hypnosis with you because it's really not necessary. At this point, what I do is I do a little bit of trance talk and the model that Erickson used, or the model that a lot of people support, Walter Secord is the school I come from, use is so sort of like my superconscious, my higher self, basically connects with you. If you've ever heard that, Milton Erickson said one very interesting thing that nobody really understood. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I cannot hypnotize you. I cannot get you in. Even stage, you may say, oh, these guys in Vegas, I've seen them fail miserably when they try to do X-rated like stuff that worked on 20-year-old kids in, in Vegas. They try to do it to 60-year-old guys in a casino in, in Sedona, Arizona, or near it. Didn't work. He had them in state, but the suggestions would not go through because their higher self, their, higher, their subconscious, their superconscious would not allow them to go into these ridiculous states because it was abusive. Those 20-year-old kids in Vegas consented to making asses of themselves. Those 60-year-old people did not. And it didn't go through, and the guy was an expert at that stage of hypnosis. He could not fucking do it. All right? So the model that shamans use in hypnosis is basically my super con I know this sounds a little woo-woo, but really, like, when you're going into trance, you're doing it to yourselves. I'm merely sort of like giving you, open the door for you, you're a super conscious. If you're super conscious, your higher self, your, your God part, spark a creator, says I'm full of shit, it will stop, it'll stop you from, from following my suggestions. And I'm not, this is why I stopped doing hypnosis altogether. I don't do individual trans sessions. I do not do formal inductions. I don't do trans induction, trans maintenance, element, nothing. I just talk to you. Whether you go in or not is solely up to you. And the way I raise an issue is, and again, don't do this at home. Psychiatrists usually do not know how to handle this. But in the workshops, we do raise an issue. I'm going to raise it just a wee bit here. Just some stuff that you may resonate to. When you feel that stuff, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to have to sort of like do like a very fast thing here. When you're thinking about or feeling, rather, certain fears, certain things, let's say you've been shut down by a girl, she gave you a real hardcore thing. She said, oh, fuck off, you little piece of shit, or whatever. You know, like that is extremely rare. This only happens once in, in maybe a thousand approaches, but it does happen. And when something like that happens, that's when you can, for instance, get into that, track this in your body, really feel it. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And then release it once and for all. And we're going to test it afterwards, if you can bring the emotion back or not. My intuition is you probably can't. Not at least as harsh as it was there. You're not afraid of the girl. Or whenever you, you, you have these fears, you'd feel not unworthy, or you're having frustration, or you, f you think you need to tolerate second-class behavior from people, or whatever it is. It's those fears, those unworthy, feelings of unworthiness, all that stuff that keeps you down. And it doesn't need to be that way. 